We begin our service today with a call to worship. Share with me the words in bold type. Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for the people. Our service today is the service for the World Mission Partnership. And so the, most of the material comes directly from that office, uh, from Tim Dunwoody and from the Reverend Lawrence Graham. And it will be the Reverend Lawrence Graham we hear speaking when we come to that part of our service. World Mission Partnership in, within the Methodist Church is the relatively new name for what used to be called Methodist Missionary Society. Uh, and so we are thinking of our work of sharing the gospel in the world, not just in our locale. This, the theme for the service today is uh, God's church continues. God's people, his church, have survived for 2,000 years. Through the thick and thin of man's history, the whole world is currently in a period of hardship, heartbreak and uncertainty. And yet, his church continues. This service is a time to hear stories of his continued mission across the world. It is a time to celebrate, be inspired and act. Our first hymn is that well-known hymn, how lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, good news. We sing together.
Psalm 66, verses 1 to 5. Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for people. Amen. Acts chapter 4, verse 23 to 31. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, You made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threat and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand and heal and perform signs of wonder through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. This is the word of the Lord. Come and see what God has done. His awesome deeds for people. In the Methodist Church in Ireland, we are a church built on mission and evangelism. That's how the Methodist Church in Ireland was founded, by the evangelism of others. And also we are blessed by the fact that from the very beginnings of our existence, we have played a part in global mission everywhere. For two, over 200 years, Methodists from Ireland have traveled to various places to be involved in mission and outreach, sharing the good news of Jesus wherever they went. Indeed, Irish Methodist World Mission Partnership has been delighted to sponsor the recently released book by Reverend Dr. Norman Taggart, in which he describes the role of Irish Methodists in world Methodism during the last century. We celebrate that heritage. Just recently, I had the privilege of chairing a circuit executive meeting in Dublin. We were interviewing a, a candidate for the ordained ministry. And the lady in question came to Ireland some years ago from Zimbabwe. And on reading her application form, I noticed that she mentioned the missionaries that had come from Ireland and Britain to her home country. And their work was described on her form as follows, that they came and spread the word of Christ through building schools to teach the word of God building churches to preach the word, and building hospitals for the healing ministry. And then she went on to describe herself as a product of that mission for which she is very grateful. What a timely example of the completion of a circle of mission. And indeed, in the last couple of decades of my ordained ministry, I've been so privileged to be stationed in churches where every day I am blessed by the ministry of Christians from around the world. Christians who've come to Ireland from countries which we once called 
the mission field. As David Smith puts it in his wonderful book, Against the Stream, this is a great time to be alive, since the Church of Christ now looks more like the numberless, multi-ethnic crowd seen in John's vision in the book of Revelation than at any other previous point in history. Furthermore, when we look at that church around the world, we see life and we see mission. In our World Mission Partnership service last year, we read from the first chapter of Romans, where we read of Paul's desire to go to Rome, that he might have a harvest in verse 13. And at that time last year, we announced the launching of our district links, by which each of our three Irish districts would have a special link to a church in another country. In Romans 1, Paul said he wanted to go to Rome to embark on his ministry of evangelism in that city. He said he longed to be there, but he couldn't be there. And yet the witness to Christ and the work of the church in Rome took place, even though Paul wasn't there. So that he was able to celebrate in verse 8 that your faith is being reported all over the world. Well, as that was Paul's experience in not being able to get to Rome, to, to, but to discover that the mission of Christ had continued nevertheless, well, I have to report now that all of the visits which we planned last year to take place with our District Link partners, of course, haven't happened because of COVID-19. But... Like Paul, we can also celebrate that God has been working around the world nevertheless, and the church is growing. So that's why the theme of our service this year is those wonderful words from Psalm 66, verse 5, where we are invited to come and see what God has done. And we're going to do so under three particular headings. Firstly, the response of churches to the COVID emergency. Secondly, God's work through our Irish Methodist mission partners. And thirdly, ongoing mission of our world church partners despite COVID. So, firstly, let's think about the wonderful way our partners have been responding to the COVID pandemic, which has affected all of us, of course. The following short video will give you some insight as to what our World Church partners have been doing during this time. The Global Methodist Church has nearly 80 million members. World Mission Partnership helps us in Ireland join in the mission of our sister churches. During the COVID pandemic, our brothers and sisters are responding. The Methodist Church in Italy is part of Mediterranean Hope, helping the growing number of migrants crossing the Mediterranean from Africa and the Middle East. They provide a welcome and friendship. There is accommodation for unaccompanied children and single women with children. The House of Cultures provides a safe place where culture is celebrated and guidance is given on visas and how to avoid exploitation by others. During the pandemic, Italian Methodists are focusing on healthcare and providing sanitization kits. While closed for worship gatherings, the Methodist Church in Chile have used their buildings as feeding centers for those in need. People come to the church and collect prepared food parcels. The church is used were chosen because they are in the most vulnerable neighbourhoods. Gambian Methodists provided food parcels for communities during lockdown. In Togo, sanitisation kits and food were being distributed. And in Malaysia, migrants have been receiving pastoral support, basic food supplies and helped in finding new employment. One of the Ghanaian Methodist hospitals is the designated COVID-19 response centre for its region. Peruvian Methodists are distributing medical provisions for isolated communities in the Amazon region. 
Methodists in Nigeria, of whom there are 1.5 million, donated food items during the pandemic. In all these situations, and more, our own Methodist Church in Ireland has offered prayers, equipment through the container ministry, and funding. We have stood with our partners during this year, past year, and we've sent solidarity grants to Haiti, Poland, Sierra Leone, Ghana, Togo, Myanmar, and others. So we celebrate what our partners have done during COVID. Now, secondly, let's celebrate the fact that mission has also continued through the work of our mission partners and mission associates. Stephen McCann continues to head up the 24-7 prayer movement on Ibiza. The Farmer family have had to return to Ireland for a while during the pandemic, but are still absolutely committed to sharing the good news. And Barry and Gillian Sloan continue to faithfully and wonderfully serve God in Germany. The Brühl Boulevard was, in GDR times, a really important part of the city. And then when the wall came down, everything changed. And the place was dilapidated for like about 20 years. And so Inspire came in here about four years ago. We talked to the city council and we said, look, here we're a handful of Christians from different churches and we just want to try and be a part of uh, breathing new life into this place. So we're standing in front of Inspire. Uh, this is our living room on the Brill. It's a meeting place for all the neighbors here on the Brill. Um, and we have various events and things on offer here where we just build community and people come together and chill and hang out and experience live music. Like tonight, we've got Music Monday or um, Learn English, Senior Citizens. Offers for kids as well, kids program. We have whiskey tastings. We have other things where pe folks just come together, get to hang out with some really cool Christians. <laughs> I've been blessed to be involved in a lot of interesting projects and blessed even just to come as an Irishman to Germany and work in the, in the German uh, United Methodist Church. But this is pretty radical even for me. I, I thought I was very progressive and out there and streetwise. It's asked me to totally reevaluate and rethink what mission is, what ministry is, even what church is. The team behind Inspire is not very big. It's at the moment about up to 10 people. Most of them are working as um, volunteers. No, it's my heart really, the, right from the beginning, is, was just to build up a kind of community of believers and how with a goal how to influence and how to help the whole society to, to grow. And it's also really a colorful team. Not always easy characters, and just people like you and me. But it's great. How are you doing? I just uh, <coughs> wanted to ask about tonight. Inspire is about ministering to people. It's about serving people. It's about serving this community. It's just doing life, a way of building community and, and a way of uh, connecting with people. I was afraid that it's more like in, in a church way, Christian. But um, when I meet, met especially you um, and Uli and the other guys, they were really open-minded for every kind of person coming here and were being open for everyone. Yeah. It was really nice and it's a warm atmosf atmosphere here. And it's nice to see that it's not narrow-minded. I feel comfortable. Yeah. I really feel comfortable. It's nice to come here. Inspire, this is a thing that has been here for four years here on the Brühl. The people who come to Inspire, to our whiskey tastings, to our bring and share brunch, to our singer-songwriter evenings or the other events that we have, are a weird and wonderful bunch of lovely people, mainly from the neighborhood here. And I would say 90% of them are 
non-church people. People just have like a potluck breakfast brunch thing, bring something um, to eat and just enjoy being here together, enjoying the community. Just a few weeks ago we had Easter and we had the opportunity just um, as Christians to talk about what Easter is and we were really surprised that a lot of people had no idea what Easter was about and what the meaning of Easter was. And I understand the question. People from maybe a traditional church environment are asking where where's the spiritual formation taking place? Um, where's the worship services? I get that. I actually think that building community, doing life with these people, um, our friends, our neighbours, because Jesus is a part of my life, I also do Jesus with them, if I can put it that way. And in the everyday connections that we have, we just have an opportunity to worship, to serve, to bless, to be salt and light in this, in this part of town. And I actually, in many ways, see our Music Monday singer-songwriter evening as an act of worship. People are spiritual beings. They might not be interested in our church events, but it doesn't make them any less spiritual. They also want to make a connection with something greater than them. Isn't that wonderful to see? Despite COVID, mission has been continuing in various places and in various ways around the world. So again, let's, as the psalmist says, come and see what God has done. For example, the Methodist Church of Upper Myanmar had long planned to have a training conference for their local evangelists. In other words, despite the COVID pandemic and despite a shortage of resources for just about everything, the priority of the church in Myanmar has continued to be training and preparation to enable mission and evangelism in unreached areas of their nation. Recently, a grant of £15,000 sterling went to the Methodist Church in Brazil. And in that region, there are several Amazon communities where the church has recently started new work and faith communities have been established. And it's also in that region of the Amazon area that the church runs a mission boat, which is crucial in bringing health care and good news Another example of mission despite COVID, which comes to mind, is in the Methodist Church in Togo. Notwithstanding the challenge of hugely reduced income, the Methodist Church in Togo has been seeking to move on with their plans to launch what they call Radio John Wesley, which would be used as an evangelism tool throughout the nation. In our reading from Acts chapter 4, We saw the response of the early church when pressure and uncertainty began to build. Opposition was rising and the future seemed very uncertain. But in Acts chapter 4, we see that their response to this uncertainty was to pray. Now, most of the prayer which we read is an affirmation of God's sovereignty. As they remind themselves and us that God is in control of his mission. But then their prayer comes to a climax in verse 29 of Acts 4 with the words, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. The fledgling young church didn't know what the future would look like, but they knew what they were called to do in the present. That church was up against the might of the Roman Empire. And yet as they stuck to Jesus, as they faithfully proclaimed his good news, as they reached out to the poor and the lost, and as they remained open to God's guiding and leading God was able to work through them and beyond them. 
As we look around the world today, we see churches who live with much uncertainty and who don't know what the future will look like. But they do know what they are called to do in the present. And they are doing it. Churches who are uncertain as to the future, but who know that their calling is to be the presence of Jesus in their local communities, who know that their calling remains to share Jesus everywhere and with all people. So let us be encouraged as we see what God is doing around the world through our partners in mission. And as we are encouraged and as we pray for them, let us also hear the challenge for us in Ireland to do the same. Finally, let's do what we can to support this wonderful work through our giving and through our praying. The printed annual report, as well as our website, which is methodistworldmission.org, can guide your prayers. And in particular, make sure to use the new district link prayer cards that you should have received, remembering also that as you pray for people in your partner church in another country, that that church is also praying for you. And so, as we come and see what God has done, let's be encouraged, let's be challenged, let's give, and let's pray. Amen. And so we pray. On the screen is the two sides of the prayer card that you will get uh, possibly in your Easter letter, certainly when the churches reopen. On one side of the card is a little bit of information about Togo. Uh, Togo is in West Africa. The church is growing and currently has 150,000 members in 74 congregations with 51 active ministers, 12 evangelists and 28 lay preachers. Despite their lacking human and financial resources, the church is committed to evangelism and pushing into the northern rural areas, which can be difficult to reach. They ask for us to pray for them, to pray for wisdom for their church leaders, to pray for peace in their land, to pray for their church's new strategy and its finances, pray for the needy in their church and to pray for our natural environment worldwide. Lord, we ask that at this time and as we continue into the future, that the church in Togo would have the courage and the strength to do what they want to do, which is to share your love with all around them and to share your love into the reaches who have never heard of you and your love for them. The other side of the card gives some information about us. And here on the Southern District, we have about 5,500 members in nearly 50 congregations. We ask the people of Togo to pray for us that we will have realistic discipleship and mission strategies to transform our churches and communities. That our faith will affect what we think, say and do. And that we will be prepared to share our faith. We ask them to pray that we would hear God's voice and be brave in doing new things for God that the partnership with Togo would inspire us to reach out and to serve. And we ask them to pray for our district leadership, for the superintendent, lay leaders, youth ambassadors, district advisory committee and department champions. Lord, we do ask that you would give us the courage and strength to seek to work in our communities, to transform them so that they will be places where people 
can learn of you and come to know you. We pray too for Myanmar. This service was put together before the coup. And so, Lord, we, we pray for the church, a church that is seeking to spread into other communities and areas, who is now looking at a situation where a dictatorship is, is taking over. We pray for the safety of all who live there. We pray that that is a land where peace would come, not just to some, but to all. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Our last hymn is Here I Am, wholly available as we have been hearing the stories of others sharing God's word. We finish this service by giving ourselves to God to make ourselves available to share his word around us and across the world, if that is where God calls us. Here I am, wholly available. joy.
May we have the boldness to say to others, come and see what God has done, his awesome deeds for people. Amen.